Today I'm speaking to the presence within you, to the presence within us, it's a living presence. And your essence, your life energy, because we really want to understand, not just conceptually, but viscerally. We want to feel it and know experientially, constantly, that our life essence, our energy, connects us. It's the nexus to our soul awareness, this living presence all around us. And the power, the peace found there, simply being, simply sitting, and enjoying the bliss of existence in this moment now, is really ineffable. It's not conceptual. It's beyond words. But at the same time, words can express from that place in an attempt to share itself. You know, even modern science says everything in this universe is one energy. It's a living energy. God within you, right now. Living within you. See, if you really want to understand that, God is not something outside of us. That's ignorance, a sense of separation, thinking that God is something far off in heaven, in a distant future, in the sky, or whatever. You really want to understand that God is embedded in this very creation right now, expressing as you and me and everything. And although it's intrinsic to everything, it's simultaneously transcendent to it. It's beyond it. It's not dependent on what's going on around it. It's not dependent on matter, really. And that's why we want to be conscious of desire. Desires that we may have outwardly. That are therefore dependent on something outside of oneself, maybe in the future, other than where one is right now. That sense of beingness. That presence that's right now. And if we're constantly drawn to somewhere or something outside of us, in anticipation of what's not right now, or if we're dwelling upon memories of the past, basically defining ourselves as a personal memory, a personal history, allowing those thoughts to be an endless real, identifying with them, instead of understanding that we're the awareness that's aware of the thoughts, that constant awareness, it's always present in everything around us. The same awareness in you and me and everybody. In the tree. We can connect to that and feel that deeply, viscerally. And the way to do that, or really to be that, is by being present. That's the solution to all human problems. Perceived problems. There's no problems. Life has no problems. Only humans have problems. And the solution to all perceived problems is simply being aware of this life energy within us right now. Being conscious of it. And thus being present. And understanding that not only divinity is present within us right now but with everything around us as it expresses as the living presence yes it may appear in different forms and expressions 
But ultimately, and not even superficially, it's obvious, obviously. This self-same energy is expressing as everything around you, and you're connected to it. And a simple practice that is practical and can help us realize this, not just conceptual, is here's some homework, a short prescription. 24 hours. Dwell in a space of absolute acceptance of everything. Accepting everything as it is. Somebody steps on your toe. Somebody steps on your head. Whatever is said. Somebody says something, you know. You, you might, there's something within you that wants to react, but you're aware of that. And thus you don't react. We want to be conscious of our reactions. Because we're not our reactions. When If we react to something, we're defining ourselves as separate from it. Thus, we want to be conscious of our responses. We want to respond, not react. Because reacting is being a victim of the world, right? We're not victims. We're connected with the world. So a simple practice to help us realize this is complete, wholehearted, genuine, unconditional acceptance of everything as it is. Now that's not saying that you don't have the power, because you do, to change whatever circumstances or environment or whatever in terms of the future. You want to change something and it's good to... To have a goal, to have a sense of direction, to give life, that energy within us, a sense of direction, consciously. So that our attention is not just <laughs> all over the place. We have some sort of focus. But acceptance is absolutely key. And it's not just... Accepting everything around you, but accepting everything within you. Accepting your own thoughts, your emotions, your reactions, whatever arises within you. And naturally, as you do this, you realize that that acceptance translates to everything around you. When you wholeheartedly accept yourself, you're going to accept everything else. And eventually, you're going to realize that everything else is you. It's that same energy that's expressing as all of humanity. And again, we, we don't just want to understand this conceptually. That's good. It's a great step in the right direction. But eventually, we want to embody. I mean, we don't even necessarily have to say in body because it's really beyond the body you feel yourself everything is an extension of you of that energy within you that you identify with you identify with the energy not as a concept mentally as a self-image as an ego you don't identify with the mind the thoughts and the mind we understand that we're the awareness that's aware of the thoughts and thus we can direct those thoughts Consciously, there's nothing as miraculous in existence as a thought process that's conscious and not just habitually, you know, out of control. We want to be conscious of our thoughts so that we can steer them and not be run by them. We want to be a master of the mind, not be mastered by the mind. The mind is a beautiful servant, dangerous master. Osho said that, I believe. Great person to watch. <laughs> Although he doesn't consider himself a person, he's really rooted in that presence, you can tell. Go watch a video, Osho, O-S-H-O. -O. You can see it right in his eyes, that light, the power of the presence, that beingness. 
that sense of connectedness, that feelingness, that awareness of the heart space that's constantly dwelling within every single living entity. Not just a human being, human being, not human havings or even human doings. All having and doing comes from being. I want to be conscious of the order of operations. Start with our beingness. Once we're firmly rooted and grounded in that, then every single action can be a meditation. Even this right now. The words are rising spontaneously. Of course, I say them consciously, however, and it's spontaneity, it's not planned. And I don't say that from a personal sense. Although we can say that that self-same life energy within everything, collectively, eternally, we could even call it the Supreme Personality. Because, to be honest, we all have that personal aspect. I don't have it. We can be it. God is both personal and impersonal. Right? But the power of the peace that's found in the presence when we are conscious of our life essence, which is the nexus to our soul awareness, it connects us to everything. We feel that deeply, continuously, consciously. sense of peace beyond all description, really. It's a silence of the heart that can be found or discovered. We all have it. We all know it. But for many of us, it may be buried beneath many desires or many Many thoughts or illusory identities, whatever it may be. But what we really seek is within us. Some of us may confuse the search for things on the outside. There comes a time when you realize. What you're really seeking, you already know it. It's already with you. In fact, it can't leave you. Because you're it. What you're seeking is yourself. And I'm not talking about a role in the world or an image or an identity in terms of personality. I'm talking about yourself in terms of this life energy that connects us to that being. Everything is one being. It's that beingness. We raise our life energy up to the heart space through acceptance. It comes automatic. We start to live from an expanded context. Life opens up to us, opens up to us. <laughs> Many different doors that we may not have known before in terms of this one's experience, in terms of our individual experience, your individual experience in the form you're in now. Of course, you've always known. These infinite potentialities, infinite doors, 
infinite mansions to explore by valuing your life energy. I say your life energy, it's our life energy. It's all of humanity's life energy. We want to value it and cherish it and nourish it, protect it, respect it. Treat life respectfully. We don't want to just consume things mindlessly. Every single bite. Not only is transmuted into light as you eat it, but it is light. <laughs> and your attention, your awareness, is like light too. It lights up everything that's around you. It's the power of your attention. Thus, we want to be conscious. So, give sufficient attention before you ingest something. It'll make a whole lot of difference when we're the degree that we're conscious. This life energy operating continuously all around us. We want to feel that sense of connectedness. And thus, we want to rise that energy up to the heart space. Otherwise, we're just an animal. Really. That's <laughs> just being honest. Speaking honestly. If you're thinking of food and sex, that's the base of the spine. That's, you know, thinking with the lower mind, ego, right? And up from that, the sacral chakra. And that's the home of many outward desires. But it's also the home of the light, the water element. When we... Our desire is for God to realize this life essence, to realize our awareness. And that's directed inwardly. We express that light effortlessly. Thus, we want to be conscious of the direction of our desires, and really be aware of our own motives. want to rise your energy up to the heart space because then it'll be less about us well it'll be more about us more about serving others and less about oneself in terms of a separate limited personal meanness i-ness because the sense of i-ness will be in everything it's that sense of beingness I is not just limited to this one. I is everything. I is that awareness. The all-seeing eye. It's constantly aware of all of this. Heart space acceptance. Throat, conscious of what we speak. We're speaking the truth. We're gossiping. Is it necessary? Is it truthful? Third eye, that sense of connectedness, and knowingness, actually experiential, not just conceptual. Knowing that everything around you is that light, is that awareness, when you rise your energy up to there. And then transcendent reality, right? Crown chakra. Where... The soul actually leaves the body. It's simultaneously aware of the body, but it's not identified with it. It understands that it's not the body. It 
So I make this video to convey to you that you are a powerful entity. Because that same essence within me is within you and everybody. It's that same life energy. God. That connects us to the living presence. It's all around us. And within you is that deep sense of connectedness and of course bliss. Real bliss is within. So we don't want to spend our life energy recklessly. Our senses are constantly drawn outwardly. We, we could say the external world or the interior world. We want to consume this constant stimulus, whether it be visual or audible or tangible. Touch the five senses. Whether we want to consume something, ingest it, food, right? Thinking of our animal, survival. That's great. We all have that aspect. But we want it to be in balance. We don't always want to be in survival mode. But yeah, I, today's video is a little bit slow paced, really coming from presence. Before this, uh, I was meditating and something arose within me to make this video. So I hope you enjoy it. It's definitely arising from a different space of consciousness than some of the other videos. Different state of consciousness, not space of consciousness because I'm not gonna get into space. <laughs> That's one that's hard to talk about with words, right? And we can try. You gotta try. That's all there is to life. Whether or not you do your best. We don't have to take it serious. We can. We can do both. Sometimes be serious. Sometimes understand that, you know, it's this external world is really a game. It's like a video game. The controller is within you. Not as a personality. Personality can't control anything. Real controller. The controller that's in me and you and everybody. That life energy. God. Connects us to the transcendent reality. That controller. Exists peacefully. And operates effortlessly. And is in no way hindered by personality.
know, it's something to be conscious of the breath. It, you know, it can shake the whole system. Maybe shake's not the right word, but it moves moves the whole system. And oftentimes people go through a whole day without even being conscious of one single breath. Because it's involuntary. Along with pretty much all of our bodily functions. What is doing that? Certainly not our personality. I, as a ego, am not in charge of everything happening within me. The controller's in charge of it. That self-same controller within you, me, and everybody. Something running across the ceiling. I think it's a scroll up there or something. I don't know. It's been there for a while though. Every now and then you know, be sitting. <laughs> you know, I, it's one of those things, thoughts I've I've observed, I've been aware of is sometimes I want to just transfer what I feel <laughs> to another and the most efficient and effective way we can do that is by means of communication. And that's how I see this one's body and mentality it serves as a way to communicate inner experience, or inner beingness, and feelingness. And words can often be clumsy. And, you know, it's kind of dependent on how somebody receives it as well. It's not everybody may receive it in the way that it's, it's intended. And the second best way to communicate is with words like this but the real thing is the presence but it's impersonal it's not a personal presence it's we could say something that we capture how much of life can we capture can we embody can we realize by being aware of our life energy not squandering it selfishly it can be a clear open vessel a container capture life energy, thus embody it, and uplift the world unconditionally. Because you don't expect anything from anybody. N there's no action anybody else can do that's going to affect you. Again, going back to acceptance. No matter what anybody says, it doesn't matter. You simply accept it. Whatever it is. Because you're not separate. That is you. It's trying to teach you something. And when you're aware of your reactions, it's, it's really teaching you about yourself. Why am I reacting to this? It's, a, it's an unresolved emotion. That you got to process sort through you first got to be aware of it before you can process it process it out to let it go you don't want to suppress it you don't want to repress it you want to release it you first got to be aware of it consciously we don't want our life energy to be tied up in the lower level emotions and animality and pursuing desires outwardly and living life selfishly. That's why I want to rise to the heart space. You can think of others, but just really think of yourself. 
You feel everything is part of yourself. You kind of look around, wow, there's some suffering in the world. And you feel that. There's that sense of empathy and understanding. And thus you want to do something to contribute, to use your body, to use your life energy, to use this gift of life in a way that we can serve and contribute to that same energy that's expressing as that entity that's suffering needlessly. It doesn't need to be. They may have gotten lost in illusory, outward-directed reality. And we can help them come back. Help them flip the script. Do the 180 shift. Tension directed inwardly. Their own subjectivity. And they'll still feel that sense of connectivity. Starts right here. It starts with the heart. Love you guys. True love is not based on a relationship, a personal identity, a personal history. Because it operates unconditionally. It's a force. It's a presence. It's an energy. It's nothing to do with the person. It has no conditions.